Right, let's go with the next topic, uh, constipation. So if a patient is presenting to you with the constipation, how we have to manage that thing? You know, whenever a patient is saying, I'm not able to pass stool, you need to take history for how long, obviously. Another case is you need to know, is it constipation or is it obstipation? What I mean by that, constipation, you're only not able to pass stool. Obstipation, you're not able to pass wind as well. So this is really important. Is it constipation or is it obstipation? What are the common causes of it? There are many causes of it, right? So simple causes, if we have to uh, look into, is lifestyle causes. I think uh, most of us, we have seen in our daily routine as well, if our diet is not good, if you're not uh, uh, putting enough of uh, uh, dietary fibers in our diet, so it is one of the causes of uh, constipation. If you're not uh, taking enough water, that is a cause of constipation. If you're not physically active, that could be the cause of uh, constipation. So first thing is you have to have the common things in your mind, obviously, right? But then the next thing is if the patient is elderly coming to with us, coming coming to us with constipation, we need to think for the worst as well. Hope for the best, but obviously think for the worst as well. So cancer, cancer is a thing uh, that we have, definitely we need to uh, keep in our mind. Colorectal cancer, right? So what are the signs, symptoms that you might have if your patient, if you're suspecting your patient might have colorectal cancer? So uh, for colorectal cancer, uh, what are the things that you have to see is you have to ask uh, general sign symptoms of cancer, right? That everybody knows, right? So we have got loss of weight. We have got loss of appetite. All right. You can ask uh, anemia symptoms as well, like uh, shortness of breath, uh, dizziness, palpitation. All right. You can ask for lumps and bumps as well. Right. So this is really important. Uh, general questions of cancer. What else you can ask? You have to ask for uh, abdominal pain. Right. Another thing that you need to ask is uh, uh, blood in the stool. That is something that you can ask. Another very important thing that you're going to ask is tenesmus. Tenesmus. Tenesmus is incomplete evacuation of the uh, stool that is really important and you know whenever a patient is coming to you with constipation or they are coming to you with diarrhea you need to ask one very important question number one is how long you have got it and how were your bowel habits before that what we are looking for we are looking for alternate bowel habits which is a really really important and it could be a sign of malignancy as well i'm not saying it's always malignancy it could be ibs as well but if the patient says i have got alternate bowel habits it's a red flag alternate bowel habits right so very 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 important thing here right so uh, make sure you don't miss this alternate bowel habits so general sign symptoms of cancer loss of weight loss of appetite anemia symptoms lumps and bumps abdominal pain uh, blood in the stool maybe in cancer you may not have blood in the stool ibd it's more common to be honest but tenesmus incomplete evacuation and alternate bowel habits that's something that you need to ask then you go to past medical history. Past medical history, family history is very, very important. Don't miss that. When it comes to lifestyle, smoking is important. When it comes to lifestyle, dietary history is very important. What is very, very important in terms of diet? You have to ask for red meat, red processed meat. So that is really, really important. You know, a lot of candidates ask me, I'm not able to finish it on time. I'm taking more than four, five minutes in the history. Why? The thing is you have to be very quick when it comes to past person history in the beginning when you're elaborating the presenting complaint you are already making the diagnosis so why you need to spend too much of time in past person history so in that kind of station if i get in past medical history i will ask uh, has it happened before any medical condition you have got any family history of any problem smoking and dietary habits that's it it's done like four or five questions from past person uh, personal or social history it's more than enough all right. So this is, uh, I mean, uh, what you are supposed to do. Right. And uh, another differential for constipation could be diverticulitis as well. 
So diverticulitis, uh, uh, what can happen? What can happen in diverticulitis? So where is going to be the pain, first of all? Uh, patient can have constipation, yes. And patient has got tummy pain as well, abdominal pain. And usually you will see it is uh, left iliac fossa pain. Left iliac fossa, LIF, diverticulitis. Your patient might be saying, I have got bloating. Another thing that I want you to ask is a patient will give you very typical history uh, that if I'm passing stool, if I'm passing stool, the symptom actually eases. Patient feels better after passing stool. Patient feels better after passing wind. This is really important. And if it is infection, obviously patient can have fever as well. So these are the things that you can ask. And later on, obviously ask about the diet as well. What kind of diet patient is taking? Because uh, diverticulitis, the main treatment is, uh, <clears throat> we have to tell the, <laughs> sorry. We have to tell the patient to go for high fiber diet. That is really important. Yeah. Anytime if you are going into the direction that you're making the diagnosis of diverticulitis, remember one thing. When it comes to investigation, do not mention uh, colonoscopy as your initial investigation. Colonoscopy is not usually done whenever we have got a case of diverticulitis because it increases the chances of perforation. Obviously, do routine investigation, do an ultrasound scan, you can do... Uh, other tests as well. You can go for maybe CT scan, but uh, colonoscopy delayed. I'm not saying it's contraindicated, but it's not done routine. It's not done routinely. It will be the last thing that I will do in a case of diverticulitis. All right, high fiber diet and do the symptomatic treatment of your patient. Right. Uh, another thing is hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Um, Again, patient can have fresh bleeding, uh, bleeding per rectum, isn't it? That's something that you will see. Sometimes patient has got pain as well. And sometimes patient says like, I've got a feeling that some something is there in my anal area. It's hanging out. So that is the like the history that you might see from your patient. All right. Obviously, the examination, when you do parietal examination, then you will be doing, you'll be able to make the diagnosis and accordingly, you can treat the patient. And anal fissure, anal fissure, uh, uh, again, uh, the thing is why patient got constipation because if they pass stool, it's painful. So that is why they don't pass stool and it's a vicious cycle. And that, that's the reason patients usually have got uh, constipation. So you have to be uh, very, very careful with these, right? So what you will be doing with these patients, I mean, you can do the uh, examination, but patient may not let you do the correct examination because it is very painful. Okay, so what you do, you'll give uh, laxative to these patients and uh, tell the patient to have like more of dietary fibers and all, and they're going to be okay in a couple of weeks time. That is something that you can do. Intestinal obstruction, yeah, that is really, really important. I'm going to go in detailing of it. Endocrine causes like thyroid can cause constipation as well. If you've got hyperthyroid, that can give you diarrhea. If you've got hypothyroid, it can give you constipation as well. So maybe you can ask some other question of thyroid as well to see if you're dealing with a, a thyroid in this. Or later on, maybe you can check thyroid function test as well to make your life easy. There are a lot of drugs also, also which can be the reason here. Uh, one of them is uh, like the opioids, morphine, codeine, uh, cocodamol is uh, nothing but codeine plus paracetamol. So any of these things, uh, if you see, uh, can be the reason of constipation. So remember, if a patient has got constipation, confirm is it constipation or is it obstipation? Maybe the complete obstruction, isn't it? And then obviously you can ask for no nausea, vomiting, that is going to go towards the intestinal obstruction as well. So these are the things I mean you need to see when you get a case on constipation. All right. Thank you.